Well, I've just nipped out of the news studio and come down to a reception area where already friends and colleagues have broken into the champagne as part of the 50th birthday celebrations. We'll have more from them shortly. But back in 1959, we'd already been on air a couple of hours, and one particular figure was getting a fair bit of attention by then. It was, of course, our fabulous Silver Knight, who's here in the reception protecting us wherever we go. Now, what else can I tell you about this a, a fantastic little creature here? Well, it was made in 1850, over 150 years old. It was actually commissioned by the King of the Netherlands, and it's actually made out of sterling silver. It's based on the actual model um, of the statue of Richard the Lionheart. Uh, this, where is it? Outside the House of Commons. <laughs> and very special and sparkly he is too. Lovely. Nice to see you here, by the way. Well, it was the lure of champagne, to be honest. That's what it was. And cake. A bit of cake. Yeah. <laughs> now, all this week, we're looking back at 50 years of Anglia television. Yeah, in a moment, we're going to take a look at the weather. But first, here's Natalie Gray with a look back at the news. First, there's the news, the local news, all about Anglia. The nerve centre at Anglia House will be receiving news of every occurrence 24 hours of the day. Head of news, Peter Kennelly, will shape it into the twice daily bulletins following the national news. Every so often, there will be that hot story that will send the stills photographer scuttling for his camera and the film unit scorching off to bring back the pictures for you. And 50 years on, we're still scorching off to bring you the latest news. Now, in the old days, everything was recorded on film. These days, it's all digital, which means it's almost instant. We put it straight onto the computer, get it edited, and put it straight out on air. And in its way, it was just as impressive in 1959. It's the only television studio in Europe with an electronic brain that actually times and cues in the programmes. We call it Topsy. Then, as now, it's important to know what's expected of us reporters and presenters. After that, Colin, will be your interview with the Minister, right? Right, sir. And how long have I got? And what line do you want me to take? Well, I suggest you have two minutes, two minutes ten, perhaps, but, you know, really winkle the truth out of him, dig it out of him. Right he can give us all the answers. I'll do my very best. Right, oh. Somebody who helped us winkle it out over the years was Judy Finnegan, who grew up, of course, to be one half of TV's most famous husband and wife team. Is it dangerous? It certainly sounds it. Judy was Anglia's first woman reporter. Like everyone else in the 60s, I used to wear them too, almost up to my navel. What's it like seeing that? <laughs> oh, it's, it brings it all back, actually. It, 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 it's lovely. It's really, really nice. You were Anglia's first woman reporter. Oh, well, How did viewers cope with that? I don't think they minded. I can't. I, I don't remember getting any letters of complaint. <laughs> uh, it's about time, really, wasn't it? You Absolutely. know, it just. I mean, there were female reporters at Granada where I'd been a researcher. There were female reporters on ITN. I mean, you'll know that. I think that being a news reporter, particularly in a vast region as, as Anglia was then, is probably one of the hardest jobs in television. This film was shown to viewers in 1977, the day after Judy had given birth to twins Tom and Dan. She's pictured with her first husband, David Henshaw, a fellow Anglia reporter. <laughs> oh, my lost youth. How old was I then? I was only... I was 28. They were a day old, literally a day old, so I don't know how I looked so perky. I think it was before I kind of actually went into shock. <laughs> Here's a reminder of some of those other faces who've kept you company over the past 50 years. Hitchhiking just isn't what it used to be. Abandoned their approach of rational debate. Well, while the doors here, they are... <laughs> In our time, we get asked to do some strange things to promote Anglia television. Like the nutcase that I am, I've decided to have a go. Now there's another big one coming up. I never thought I'd see Norwich like this. That's why they're campaigning for more accountability under future freedom of information laws. Are you getting on? No, you think. Have you had much damage on the ground floor? Oh, only little... Still watching Anglia tonight. Still to come this evening... I did do an interview with a lion trainer in the cage with the lions. I don't think I'd be doing that again. I did do an interview with a knife thrower while he threw the knives. I did 
do a day on the trapeze at the circus in Great Yarmouth, and each time somebody came up with some idea like this, I used to say, oh, you won't get the insurance, they, Anglia won't let me do that. And they always used to say, no, we've got it. <laughs> Two eminent TV men who gained their earliest experience on About Anglia were David Dimbleby and David Frost. Well, I see from this that the 8.30 from Liverpool Street arrives at 11.11, but it doesn't. Frost, whose father was a Methodist minister in Beckles in Suffolk, joined Anglia in 1960, but he didn't get his contract renewed. You see, executives here felt he didn't have a future in television. Just like Judy, he rose to the top of his game. What a breeding ground for talent. Natalie Gray, Anglia News.